You're in the right place at the right time, stretching from the distant spaceports of Black Spire and Mos Eisley, all the way to the jewel of the core at Coruscant and the bright center of the galaxy. Slamming into your hollow projector like a supercharged nanoparticle of coaxium. This is the Star Wars Unfiltered Podcast. I'm your host, John, and my co-host is... Jason. And we are here to bring you your needed dose of Star Wars film, TV, book, comic, gaming, and collecting news. The date is January 4th, 2021, and the long nightmare of 2020 is now over. Sadly, that's probably not the case, but <laughs> the energy yeah, was stretched you, into... You thought, you thought that was uh, Empire Strikes Back. Last year was just a new hope. New hope. <laughs> Yay. Well, hopefully it doesn't get to Revenge of the Sith. That might be even worse. <laughs> <laughs> but time will tell. Um, so today we we're going to talk about the finale of uh, The Mandalorian, because uh, we, we did a pretty good job of covering all of season two up to this point um i think uh we didn't talk about the marshal a, a ton we didn't go like scene by scene on that one but i think we kind of interspersed it in between on some other videos so at least there's that and uh but yeah the rescue was the title of season two's finale and i think between the Jedi episode with Ahsoka, this was the other one that seemed to have, I don't know, almost created a sea change with like a before and after with Star Wars. Like nothing is ever going to be the same after this in, in some regards. Um, do you, would you agree with that assessment? Yeah, I'd say so. I was uh, momentous is I think the word. Yeah. As far as, as, and far as think, what happened. I think as far as I can tell from all the social media that I've delved into and all the YouTube and all the conversations I've had with you and other fans, I think everyone is 95% happy with, with the, I mean, we'll just go right into it. Luke shows up at the end. Like, let's just what? jump right into that. <laughs> Spoiler alert. Yeah. It's okay. No one's listening to the show. Luke is Grogu's daddy. <laughs> yeah spoiler alert um well i wanted to just jump into that as the first thing because well, again i think everyone's really happy with it i think the only minor nitpicking i've been seeing is the typical stuff like the uncanny valley of his face which i'm i i'm pretty okay with i think could it have been better yeah but you know to me it was um and I'm still in the minority here, but I didn't care for how Leia looked at the end of Rogue One. And well, I, I, I mean, we've seen a lot of examples now um, since since Rogue One of Tarkin and of Leia, and and we've seen examples of what people in their you know their quote unquote basements can do with like deep fake software. Um, uh, yeah, for, for Luke and. And um, I will say what I've seen people do with Deepfake for Tarkin, especially, but also Leia and and Luke to a lesser extent, because that's only been out for a few weeks. Um, it's way better than I would than agree. I, I don't think I've personally seen Deepfake stuff of Leia, so I, I can't say, or even of Tarkin. I don't recall. But uh, Leia Deepfake, to a lesser yeah. Leia to a lesser extent because it's only a few seconds and yeah um, yeah but but Tarkin it was like huge it it really um it, it did a lot to sh to to shorten the gap in the, in yeah. the uncanny valley for that and and, yeah. it, and you know that you know uh Rogue One it was several years ago now yeah um, almost but yeah, almost but I mean four. this is people doing this stuff at home I mean Hollywood or you know I don't know why they don't if there's some that's the, that's reason the or question. something that's the question i'm wondering why why are they not using this technology why are they just doing it with de-aging on their own programs well it's interesting too because i think um 
how did do you know off the top of your head how they did Tarkin exactly? It's a guy, it's a stand in. Yeah, they had the actor, I can't remember his name, but he did Sherlock Holmes and a bunch of English uh TV right. and movies. And um, he had the right cadence and the right voice, and they had that kind of halo thing that straps to his face, and then they had the dots to yeah, capture. Yeah, I think I think they're just too um they're too like committed to that as their technology because they use it for like did fully CG characters. I mean, he was kind right. of fully CG. Yeah. Yeah. But it's interesting that what they did with Tarkin in the, in the deep fakes was so good. And that's, that's a deep fake on top of a Hollywood CG yeah. face on yeah. top of an actor. And it was, it, they were able to do, do well, that. Now I, now I got to see these Tarkin deep fakes to, to compare it but um they're pretty good i mean you know it's it's obviously i i'm just as good as they are i just wonder if like man if they did that and then after the fact ilm was able to go in and tweak the deep fake yeah more like imagine how good it could be or there's the one um i think i sent it to uh, you and jess the it was harrison ford deep faked onto mm -hmm. uh alden mm -hmm. from solo I've and, seen that before. That and is, and that's good. like, whoa, that's that's really good too. And and again, obviously, there's going to be issues. It's not going to work perfectly from every camera angle and stuff. Yeah. But if they did that, and then ILM went, I mean, <laughs> they don't necessarily need to do that for Alden. Yeah. But for like Tarkin yeah. and stuff. Um, yeah. If it, they went back and tweaked it after the fact, imagine how good it could be. Same thing with Luke, like. The yeah. deep fake for Luke looked pretty good. And then of course there's the you know, there's the Sebastian Stan uh stuff the, too. Right. The rumor that he that was a big rumor leading up to the episode. Like he was going to play Luke in the finale, like from what I was able to glean from Well there has been media. comparison photos of him with Luke from Empire mm -hmm. and it's pretty close. I mean, you know, if we're getting into the territory of if they're going to actually maybe recast, like recast, I mean, you already did it with Ford. You might as well do it with, it just gets kind of weird because you've, you've already had the same actor play the older version and then yeah. you're, you're not, you're yeah. not going, you're not going further back where right. the actor started playing the character like they did with, with Ford and, and all that, yeah. cause that's yeah. before you're, you're filling in gaps between when the original actor played him originally and when they played him in. So it gets, yeah. that's kind of weird, but it does um, get weird. I guess as long as they have the blessing of the original actor, I would be okay with it. And I think they would too, if that's their, the route they take, I, but I, yeah, I would think that'd be easy. Cause one, Ford's not going to give a shit. No, he won't. He <laughs> He's going to be like, <laughs> Force <laughs> Ghost? What's that? I don't fucking care about a Force Ghost. He's too busy crashing planes and getting on the run <laughs> wrong one, runway. Hamill, I mean, Carrie's dead, unfortunately. Um, and and Hamill, I don't think, is that into it anymore. I don't. I think he's kind of, you know... Yeah, he's kind of done. Maybe. Well, it was even the case after Return of the Jedi. He was ready to move on to other stuff, and all through the '90s, he could have he could have jumped back into Star Wars, doing Luke and his voice for one of the Jedi Knight games. Because I remember there was a big, you know, kind of poo pooing when Jedi Outcast came out because Mark Hamill did another video game voice that same year mm -hmm. and then they got some other guy to do luke and jedi outcast well and people were like why can't mark do it but it's like well he doesn't maybe he doesn't want to go well, back to luke it's interesting you, know? you bring that up because i think billy west touched on this at some point in an interview um where he lamented the fact that um in in especially in big uh hollywood movies now more and more in animated features, they are casting, um, they're not casting voice actors, they're casting, you know, traditional actors. Yeah. Um, and it really kind of hurts the voice acting industry. Um, and I wonder if Mark kind of turned those roles down to give space 
to other actors. Oh, like Mark's got I, his own thing going dude, on. I, I actually, I completely think that is part of his reasoning because look, think about Mark, how he's been with other actors and in general with people, he's always kind of, he's never, he's always been a very humble person and he's never like, like been like, look at me, I'm Luke. I am Luke Skywalker. You know, he's always, right. he's always supported other people underneath or on the side of him giving them opportunities and chances and he's always I well, think and, also, he's, and he's a voice actor you know and so he's a he voice be, actor you know oh he, yeah he's solidarity so, with yeah, other voice he, actors i could see absolutely. that being a, a reason absolutely and i remember when i found out that he did the voice of the joker i think batman the animated series had already been out for probably about two years because i discovered it he did Joker, I think, in the first issue of um, Star Wars Galaxy magazine, which was fall 94. And I was like, whoa, Mark Hamill is the Joker? Because I had been watching the cartoon for, you know, since it came out. And I saw Mask of the Phantasm in the theater. And it was just funny to imagine Mark Hamill, Luke Skywalker, having that amazing voice. Like, he, he sold me as the yeah. Joker completely. <laughs> I think so. I think before we've talked about um, you know in conversations and stuff about how it was interesting that Mark could do like a killer Yoda. Yes, right? he yes. does a killer Yoda. Like if they had to ever replace um, Frank for Yoda, mm -hmm. they they could totally just get Mark to do it. I, I mean, they know. could get there's other actors that could do it too, obviously. But so then it was interesting that. You know, he, uh, we always said, like, why didn't they get Mark to do Yoda for the radio drama, the ESB and the. <laughs> He'd be the like, Jedi. like recording against himself, which would be <laughs> Yeah, so I know, funny. right? You know, but they got, uh, was it John Lithgow, right? John, which, John Lithgow. And yeah. he, he does a pretty good Yoda. When he, when he does the low Yoda voice, it's, it's pretty good, but. It's well, not as it's good as Mark. <laughs> any, any time with actors, if you're, if you're recasting something, yeah, certainly they probably could have got somebody to do exactly the same Yoda or they could have got, you know, they could have called up Frank Oz and maybe he could have recorded something in between, you know, directing stuff and all that. Um, right. So sometimes I wonder if like, yeah, they just, you know, they wanted to tweak it a little bit, you know, cause especially with the radio dramas and stuff. Um, I think ESB had a lot of extra stuff. Return of the Jedi was a lot yeah. shorter, so it didn't have too much extra stuff. Yeah. So you're not and you're that, not just doing like a, a you know a remake audio yeah. wise, you know, because yeah. you know they could just use the audio from the movie if they wanted to. But um, right, right. Uh, speaking uh, of uh, casting for the radio dramas, little side thing, Harrison Ford was going to do it for at least for the first one. And it was only because I think he was filming Raiders of the Lost Ark. That's the only reason he didn't do it. He was just busy. And yeah. um, imagine how awesome that would have been to have heard Harrison in the radio drama doing all those extra scenes. I can't um, imagine him doing it. With I, I, know, I, 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 I'm, I I'm shocked that he would I can't either, but I, I read the quote. Like He actually said he was interested and... And because Mark was doing it and Anthony and he was going to. But yeah. um, having said that, Perry King did a great job as Han. Mm -hmm. And he did Han in all three. And between the writing of Brian Daly and Perry King, he is absolutely an amazing Han. So, you know. Yeah, the, I think, I think sometimes um, along those lines, sometimes it's important to separate the character from the actor. Mm -hmm. um, which... You know, obviously in the voice stuff, it's easier to do. Um, in, and and that's why I like. That's the the biggest thing I like about Alden doing Han in Solo is that it it sort of separates Ford from the character, so that yeah. Well, you know, maybe maybe other characters we can get more movies and shows and stuff about them, and we're not tied. We're not tied to these actors. You know, it, it's a good example because we've, you and I have heard so many audio dramas and video games that recast these characters. And in some, we've heard good ones and we've heard bad ones. I've heard a lot of good Han Solos besides Perry King, even. 
um, ones that sound a lot like Harrison, but they're not a carbon copy per se. And I've heard a lot of Luke's. That's a little harder to get because Luke has a voice that, you know, if you get it just slightly wrong, it it, it changes the well, character Mark, a lot. Mark has a distinctive voice, and yeah, even yeah. you know, people say, and I don't, <laughs> I don't want to criticize Mark Hamill's uh, voice acting ability, but most of the time, I can tell it's Mark based on some of the not speech patterns, but just the sound and the timber of his voice is yeah. kind of distinct to me. So, um, whereas you know, they people, I, I don't know if anybody has really, but I think. I think I've read people compare him to like Mel Blanc as far as having tons of voices and stuff. And, and yeah. he does, but it's, you don't get, I don't think you necessarily get lost in, in, in his characters no. so much because you can kind of identify. It's not like, he's not like Frank Welker or, uh, yeah. Where Frank it's like, Welker hey, can do Optimus a lot Prime. of, yeah. Unless, unless Frank Welker's doing like his, his, oh, sorry. Uh, I was thinking of Peter Cullen. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> the other guy. But <laughs> yeah. Un- unless Frank Welker's doing his uh, Fred voice, which is, you know, his, I think that's his like m- kind of his normal voice. Yeah. Uh, anyway. Um, so the heck were we talking about? <laughs> Any, anyway, <laughs> Mark, Mark's a great, I, separating the actor from the uh, character is important. And you're right. There's been a lot of good and bad uh, voice actors for characters. Um, yeah. But you know, it's just it's it helps just kind of reduce the rigid rigidity or whatever yeah. rigidness of of the your mind's eye. Absolutely, and and like I said, it is cool when we get one that sounds so much like the original. Case in point, Scott Lawrence as Darth Vader. Who, yeah, see, that's a good that's a good example. Scott Lawrence, great. He in my in my head and in my mind, he is the 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 next Darth Vader in my mind yeah. as far as he's number two after um James Earl Jones. Works for number two. <laughs> and uh and, yeah. and, and then yeah. and, but but he's so close to James Earl Jones, that's why it works. Now somebody like Nick Jameson doing Palpatine, he Different. In my mind, is number two, but he does a different Palpatine. Absolutely, and for whatever reason, for whatever reason, Nick Jameson as Palpatine, it works so well with the video games and audio dramas. And I think, yeah. I don't know if it's the the depictions of Palpatine in those mediums fits with Nick Jameson's delivery more, you know, because you get kind of a comic book emperor in Dark mm-hmm. Empire he does it and then even in tie fighter i don't know it just fits the imagery so well in, yeah. in the cut scenes and stuff so yeah that is an interesting um topic because, anyway so i i would know. totally be down for them recasting uh if if they want to fill in the gaps between uh return of the jedi and uh the sequel trilogy um and and actually show luke doing stuff i i was kind of um well, I'm totally fine with them recasting if they want to use Sebastian Stan or somebody else. Yeah. That's cool. Or, you know, if there's the rumors are true and they're going to just kind of ignore the sequel trilogy, which I don't think they're going to do. Yeah. That's fine, too. Um, and then uh, I do wonder if they thought about or approached Mark or something about de-aging him. Because that's, well, that's I was, worked pretty well in the past. With certain... I was under the impression that they did, that he was on the set, and they did. Do we know? One way or I the th- other? I, I saw a headline that said that, and I didn't, I didn't read any more, oh. but I was under the... We'll, we'll, we'll look it up while we're talking here. But, um, well, I suppose that if any, any behind the scenes will eventually come up in whatever the, the behind the scenes... I mean, yeah, so far we saw the episode one, season two of Disney Gallery, where it really just covered the whole season in in an hour-long thing. But unfortunately, that was the one part that it didn't cover. It covered, like, all the (laughs) Ahsoka and, like, Rosario Mm -hmm. and all these things, but they left the the Luke thing. I'm pretty sure it's not de-aged 
Mark. It, lo it looks on here. Uh, it says he was on set, but oh, I think that was it. Yeah, he was on set. Um, but I'm not seeing any headlines that confirm that he was actually de-aged. But another thing I wanted to mention in regards to Luke and the, the scene was, and we haven't even talked about the story aspects yet, but I would, what blew me away. Wait, was, was there a story or I thought it was just <laughs> Luke taking just down Luke. dark troopers. Yeah, that was it. <laughs> that was it. Um, what blew me away though, was his voice being de-aged because I've heard, okay, when uh, two or three years ago, when they had the forces of destiny, little mini cartoons come out, Mm -hmm. on youtube and disney plus or not disney plus on disney xd on tv mark voiced luke in an older segment where he's training on dagobah and you could tell it was current mark hamill sounding young like doing whatever they could to slightly change his voice but you could still tell it was older mark hamill voicing they just got to you got to get somebody to to squeeze his balls or something. <laughs> right. But whatever they did, whatever technique they used for Mando, it absolutely sounded like 1982 era Mark Hamill. And I don't know what how they did it or what whether they just go into the vocal patterns on the editing suite and you know tweak it somehow, but well, yeah. um you know, this doesn't get a lot of. I'm I'm surprised that this doesn't get a lot of. I don't know, like current coverage or um, use or what. But I um, do you recall when uh, Ebert had uh, I think it was mouth cancer or something, mm -hmm. and he, and he mm -hmm. lost his ability to talk. And this yeah. company designed. They were working on the software, and they. Um, they like contacted him or something, and they came up with uh, basically it was like a communication device, like a voice box type thing, like Stephen Hawking had. I um, do remember because he came on the Tonight Show with Jay Leno when he yeah. had that. I yeah. do remember. Yeah, and I think he did the initial uh, thing with Oprah. Maybe I think um, the initial uh, the videos that I've seen, I think it was Oprah. Um, and mm -hmm. it was basically they took uh, they they basically fed in tons of his dialogue from his shows and stuff and his interviews um, from Siskel and Ebert and all that. And they basically came up with his voice digitally. Well, and he I was did able not to know talk. that. He was able to talk as himself it was, with his voice. And it was pretty good. And this was like, you know, 10 years ago or whatever. Yeah. I, I don't really hear was. much about it now, but Probably I feel like. Probably just because he passed. So it's like, it's just not. Yeah. A, but I, I, I mean, the, I mean the technology. Right? Yeah, yeah. Like, you're I right. feel like it's it's kind of like deep fakes, right? It's something yeah. you can, you know, with the right software, somebody could do it in their basement. You know, you feed in all or this. It's even like those those funny parody songs that people create of of Trump or whoever singing a song yes. based on yeah. all the clips they've said they and auto they auto tune it and dude, stuff. Dude, it's it's always so funny and it's amazing yeah. the algorithms of the the program that do that and. um because it's just uncanny how good mm -hmm. it is. Yeah. So, I mean, I wonder they 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 could do that maybe, um, or probably more likely is they just tweaked Mark's voice if it was him. I'm not. I couldn't tell personally. I can't tell. Like I could tell that it almost certainly was not de-aged Mark because yeah. it, it didn't look like when they de-age other actors. Right, like right. Rotoscope it, it or whatever. It looks like Rogue One technology, basically. It was yeah, it was yeah. that which is which did, is fine. It did look really good, though. I mean, it wasn't perfect, but I was. It, when you've seen Return of the Jedi hundreds or even thousands of times, there's little facial ticks that that Mark has in the movie, and it's amazing that they recreated some of those mm -hmm. in this episode. So yeah, the only thing is they man they. They couldn't seem to get the lips right with when he was talking. That was the only that, real that issue is, I had. And, you know, that's always the most challenging thing on mm -hmm. the face. That That's really the, the widest gap of the Uncanny Valley, I think. Well, they had that so, problem with uh, Henry Cavill on Justice League, the Joss Whedon Justice League. 
they had to digitally remove the mustache. Right. Cause, uh, which looks I, awful. Yeah. Like I, I didn't see the movie. You, you, you did obviously, but no, the I clips didn't. I saw. I oh, okay. Purposefully avoided the movie, and I'm glad I did because we're finally going to get the Snyder <laughs> cut and expanded right. material on HBO Max soon. Right. Hopefully right. soon. I think well, it's not. Hopefully, it is happening. But yeah, yeah. No, the clips I did see of that though, it looked awful. Like really noticeably bad so yeah and i I feel like i i feel like that's kind of a symptom of the same thing where hollywood you know they've got deadlines and these people you know they gotta you know they farm this stuff out or or they or they you know the companies do it like ilm and stuff and you know they're Mm -hmm. under a deadline they just got to get it done it's not like you know it's not like a guy in his basement obsessing over (laughs) something and tweaking it and making it perfect and stuff yeah yeah it's kind of so Spe- speaking of guys in their basements obsessing over things, a uh, little little side thing about Boba Fett. Everyone was like, I saw a headline where it was like, fans are asking, "Where's Boba Fett's cape?" Because he's not wearing that little like small <laughs> cape he had in these uh-huh. episodes. It was his and, binky, right? And it's like I, I left like a sarcastic comment going, "Wow, you know, like it, it's amazing that." Uh, a story like this couldn't, you know, possibly make Star Wars fans seem any geekier than they already are. <laughs> but because you know, it's just one of those. I think Star Wars fans, even more than Star Trek fans, we have a propensity for laser focusing on tiny ass fucking things. Mm-hmm. Whether it's the length of a super star destroyer in one source, mm-hmm, or a video yeah. game, or a book, and you know, it's funny because. Even though I do enjoy laser focusing on a lot of things, a lot of those things I just don't give a fuck about. I have never cared about the length of the executor in one source versus another, versus another. because I'm always like, well, it's all fiction, so who gives a fuck, you know? Well, like, I, hey, I grew up calling it the executor, so I, I did too. For I had, at least a few years. I had to get I had to get used to the name change you, when you I. You know what? Through the nineties. I called it the executor and it's mm-hmm. really because when you look at the word, it's very similar to executioner. So yeah. it, it's like one of those words where it looks like another word. And then you kind of in your head, you think of it that way. You, and- you read it, 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 it. This happens to me all the time when I'm reading uh, books and stuff, especially with new like names and uh, made up words and stuff. Um, but I'll read it. I'll I'll read it once, and I may read it wrong, like like uh, executor, and then I never read the word again. I just see the word, and in my mind, I it it just boom. You know, I know that's the word. That's the word. Like I know that's how that's how I'll mispronounce something forever. That's that happened to me for years with the word apparatus. I used to read it as apparatus. <laughs> basically because it looks like that when you just uh-huh. phonetically see it but then it's weird though because then i knew of the word apparatus yeah. but i was never my brain was never combining the fact that the what I, the reading version was the also the same word i was hearing in other movies and things it was it was this weird thing with that word so what about his wookie pelts are people worried about that that's a good question um i don't know if that came up yet but obviously well, i'm sure doesn't. it will if it, <laughs> if it <laughs> you did. know it will yeah um i mean well, yeah people, that are, was... people aren't worried about the jumpsuit that he wore under the armor or or his dad bod too much or his uh well that people are people <laughs> are worried bit. about How about boba fett's dentures or bridge or or <laughs> you know i'm his gonna veneers. bring that up his, his, his veneers, veneers. Because I, I brought that up with you, and I've not seen a single other person on the internet well, talk about that. They, I mean, know. it's it's it, it's just Tamira, you know, fixing his teeth, obviously. And they look great. There's nothing wrong with them. It's just that when you see Attack of the Clones as much okay, as we well, have, and then you see I, now, it's like, oh. I have it on good authority that Sarlacc stomach juices restore enamel and leave your teeth like in better condition than than you got there i see i see that's, that's my that's my head canon the the sarlax uh 
Sarlacc's stomach acid is restorative uh, to uh, tooth enamel. Damn, so Palpatine needs to take a trip down to Sarlacc's <laughs> gullet and get some, get some real yeah, shiny. Yeah, on his way to Exegol. <laughs> yeah, oh man, I never thought of that. That'd be cool. Um, but uh, yeah, so anyway, going back to what I was saying about the minutia of Star Wars fans, that it, I don't know, there's just something particular about our fandom. We We focus in on these things and I guess maybe it was built in from the original trilogy because it seemed like wherever the camera was turning, there was some little unique, interesting thing. Yeah. Whether it was the cantina or Jabba's palace or wherever, there was always some little bit of technology that stood out there's, for a there's, second. And there's bits of technology. There's little detail work, and that's that's what really separates like um, B B budget um, movies from a triple a movies yep. and uh sci-fi and and all that stuff is is um the the detail work whether yeah. stuff feels real and worn and like you know actually used versus you know something that just looks like a a prop on a movie set or whatever right because how many generic sci-fi movies have we seen where the ships all kind of look like they come from a particular universe even though it's not that universe and it's just kind of yeah. like this generic starfighter design or, you know, whatever. And yeah. anyway, <laughs> going back to more of our thoughts on the rescue. Um, first of all, also th the reaction a lot of people had with Luke, and it's the one I had where I think they teased out the scene perfectly because it wasn't just like, Okay, when Luke's X-Wing shows up, they could have had him come in on the comm and be like, hi, this is like, you know, I'm Luke, Luke Skywalker. Skywalker. I'm here to rescue you. Rescue you. Yeah. <laughs> you know, whatever. <laughs> Recycle right. the lines from the other movies. Right. And what's funny is, you know, I sent you that meme <laughs> of like Joey from Friends kind of like going, hey, oh, yeah, one yeah. X-Wing. <laughs> it's like one X-Wing because that was exactly what happened to me where – my brain registered that there was an X-Wing and I was kind of like Cara Dune in the scene where it's like, yay, one X-Wing. Like I thought it was the, the guys. I thought it was the, the, the guys from earlier in the season. Right. The new Republic guys like Trapper Wolf, you know, Dave yeah. Filoni and that other dude. I know I, that was my three seconds of initial thought. And then I'm like, wait a second. I'm like, wait, one X-Wing. And I was, I was telling Nicole, I was like, they wouldn't. I was like, no way. I, I wouldn't have thought. I wouldn't have thought. Yeah. And it was like, and then you see Grogu looking at the camera, or you see Mando looking at the camera, and you see the X-Wing going in the hangar. And I'm like, I'm still going, I'm still kind of shaking my head going, no way, they wouldn't. But then I'm like, okay, well, who is this? You know, who 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 is this? And then we see it's a Jedi. And then at that point, I was like, it has to be, but I'm still disbelieving because mm -hmm. I'm like, well, they they could just make it Ahsoka. They want us to think it's somebody yeah. as a red herring, but it's probably going to be Ahsoka or, you know, come in to save the day. But then it's like, okay, there's one lightsaber and there's not two. And it's all black and white on the camera, so you can't see the color yet. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But then the slow reveal of the green lightsaber, then that's when all the fanboys, all the hardcore fans, anyone who's seen Return of the Jedi, it was like, that was the moment. Yeah. So, and it was beautiful. It was an amazing, and also someone pointed this out. We got to see Luke utterly destroyed droids because I almost feel like if, if it was Luke with all the experiences he had after Return of the Jedi, I, I couldn't really see Luke slaughtering stormtroopers because they're living beings and he he might like disable them or, or like slash their guns, but I couldn't really see Luke going full Vader he on would, stormtroopers. He would force project himself into the hallway and make all the stormtroopers <laughs> shoot each other. Right, right. In some weird circle, you know. You, you know, there was all kinds of things, but it, it all it would almost go against the Jedi code in a way to lash out in a in a 
of, of <laughs> wrath of destruction. What is he? He's the T eight hundred from T two. He's like <laughs> he's just chopping their legs off. He's like, go live. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Um, but the fact that it was droids gave him full reign to see the Luke we know and love. Yeah. And so and we hate the dark troopers because they're the bad guys. So when it was a good no, um great. I've seen I've seen the, the scene side by side or portions of the scene side by side with uh, Luke in the hallway with the dark troopers and then mm -hmm. Vader in the hallway with the rebel troopers. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's not shot for shot or, you know, anything, but it's very reminiscent. of. It has that flavor. Yeah. And it was great because it, it even, you know, it strengthens that father son, you know, yeah. yeah. Between the two. Yeah, it absolutely does. I, I need to see a good side by side. I've seen and I, obviously yeah you know, in, in the context of like that movie and the series, it's a great, you know, that was like, you know, in rogue one, that was like, holy shit, we're going to see Vader like do shit, you know? Yeah. And like yeah. tear through stuff. And it was kind of the same thing. We, we've had this great movie. We're going to see Vader do stuff. Oh, we've had this great series. Wow. We're going to see Luke do yeah. shit. You yeah. Know? It was the perfect cherry on, on the cake, which had been a great cake so far. <laughs> but then it got this yeah. awesome cherry on top. Bo Boba liked it. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> Boba likes cake. Yeah. <laughs> I was so glad. I was so glad that he didn't die because I was half expecting, and and I think people were putting out like false rumors and stuff online that um that, like it, it, the day or two before that Fett was going to die, and I was very happy. And, and it's funny. I don't. I I never liked. Boba Fett that much before Django, and I still I don't really care about Mandalorian stuff that much. Like it's not mm -hmm. like it's just not my cup of tea. It's interesting yeah. and stuff, yeah. but I'm the same way. It's just it's um, interesting. It's an aspect of Star Wars, but I'm not a Mando fanboy. For but I the... I am so fascinated by Boba Fett ever since you know. Django and him being like an unaltered clone and all that stuff. It's so yeah. it's so great. And I'm I am so happy that he's got his own series coming out mm -hmm. and Tamora is you know Boba Fett. It's great. Right. And the fact that Phoenix Shand gets to be his sidekick mm -hmm. and they get to his, his major domo. Yeah. Presumably. It, totally. And you know, actually, let's let's briefly talk about the teaser because I, you know, I'm watching it. The credits are rolling. Nicole and I are talking about it, and then all of a sudden, you know, it switches over. We're like, oh shit! There's a there's a post credit scene, and and it made sense because you didn't see any concept art. I totally forgot credits. that there would probably be one. I, I just kind of, I, I I just let the credits roll, and yeah, I totally forgot. I, yeah, I didn't know because we've never had one on Mando on any episode, any season. So it was a whole new thing, and it, that's just not really a Star Wars thing. That's always been a Marvel thing. So I was mm -hmm. like, yeah, kind of whatever. But it was really cool. It was interesting to see Bib Fortuna, fat and <laughs> Bib Fat Tuna, Bib Fat Tuna, and like corpulent with the the uh, wealth of uh, Java's empire uh, the mm -hmm. last five years. I think that was what they're going for. And what I loved, and I didn't know until I saw the behind the scenes on Disney Gallery, I think, was they gave Bib a staff, which was with the old Kenner action figure. Oh, which, really? Yeah, it wasn't in Return of the Jedi, but the action figure had it back in the 80s. And it's just I love, like, I love details like that. I know it's, it's, it's when you know that the person and the people, the people making, they care. yeah, they, they care. And like, they're bringing, they're bringing forward their like fandom into it, yes. and, you know, in a way that like actually, um, you know, I guess resonates with the same type of fans. It's the, it, it's basically it's like a lot of things now where they, Dave Filoni and John Favreau and these other, everyone else that worked on it, they obviously grew up as fans. And so mm -hmm. it's just one of those little, it's almost like a secret code to other fans that only they are going to recognize. Yeah. But it's kind of like a wink, wink, like, Hey, we're, we're one of you, you know, mm -hmm. yeah, in a way. And so, 
and there was other things too, like on season one, there was the stormtrooper transport, uh, you know, that dropped off the troopers. That was the the old Kenner toy. There was the E web that was like one of the old Kenner toys. There was, um, I mean, even just using an IG unit like IG eleven, even though he's not IG eighty eight, we always wanted to see IG eighty eight in action. To you know, do we, something, yeah. We do something. He turns <laughs> his head to look at Vader, like that. That's it. Yeah. Um. I mean, even in the EU and stuff, we saw IG eighty eight in Shadows of the Empire as a boss on Ord Mantell, and he's popped up in some short stories and stuff. But we've well, never you know, really... technically we've seen him blow up uh, starships yes. and stuff <laughs> in Return of the yes, Jedi. Yes, we have. Thank you, Kevin G. Anderson. I mean, depending on depending on which EU you want to uh, <laughs> subscribe to, you know that you know. Let me just briefly say because I know we joked about that. Uh, a few days ago, but it's like, you really want to bring back legends? Do you really want to bring back legends and have IG-88 be the Death Star too? Um, we did bring back legends, Trioculus or whatever his name is. Yeah. Is raised yeah. Papa. <laughs> that would technically, yeah, because they, they would be, they would be cousins, I think, right? Or no. Wait, Ken, Ken, oh, Ken, Ken, that's right. Ken was the son, right? Right. Ken was the son yeah. of Trioculus, or actually Triclops, because Trioculus Trioculus was the pretender saying he was Palpatine's son because uh, he had that third eye, but Triclops was the real son in the insane asylum on Duro, I think it was. Oh, boy, the Triaculus. Anyway, book. anyway, enough of that. <laughs> Gamorians in that scene with Bib Fortuna, too skinny, they just like, like they shit. were, just like they were in the 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 ring on episode yes. one. Yes, they and I I've I've seen it again because I rewatched it, and I don't think they necessarily did anything wrong. They were they were going for a different Gamorian look. Yeah, they they even said on on the behind the scenes they wanted them to be more wiry and not as fat as the Jabba's palace ones. Yeah, but for whatever reason, in them doing that, it makes it look like they went down to the local <laughs> Ben Franklin and got themselves a two dollar Gamorrean mask and then mm -hmm. threw it on a dude and painted yeah. his skin green. It just yeah, doesn't. It, just did, it didn't work in the ring in the uh, fighting ring one. I feel like it was the lighting. That did the most damage. Yeah, it's like harsh. The, the ones, the ones in Jabba's palace actually look pretty good. Um, yeah, it, they were just skinny, but you know, it it makes sense. There's, there's, it's, it's not every. It's a big galaxy. Yeah, not every <laughs> example of a species is going to look the same. You know, There's yeah, short ones, tall ones, fat ones, skinny ones, all that stuff. Right, just like uh, we in A New Hope, we see that one tall Jawa like next to the 3PO. Oh the, yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the giant Jawa, yeah. He's so, like as tall as three PO. Yeah, it's some, like somebody uh, needed to put their fifteen-year-old kid in a in a Jawa costume. Yeah, yeah. I, I've always wondered about that, and I wonder if there's lore behind that that Jawa. But um, and you know, Tale, another... Tales from the Sandcrawler. That's the next book coming out. The next anthology book coming out. Yeah, seriously. Um, but yeah, uh, as far as other things in the rescue, um, I just love the the rapport that the characters had. I loved that it was kind of like, kind of a heist kind of thing, almost like Rogue One, where it's like, all right, we're going to break into the Imperial cruiser, and you know, you got you got Kara, you got Finnick, you got Fett in the starship, you know, and then Mando goes off on his own. It was very, I don't know, everyone had their little role to play. And then, of course, you had the the classic Star Wars scene of the holographic planning. Like, mm -hmm. that's such a trope. Like, yeah. all right, someone bring up the hollow. We're going to show exactly what we need to do. Where, where um, was the other Mandalorian dude? The third uh, in, in uh, good Catan's question, trio. Because it obviously, well, there was that woman, too. Uh, I can't remember her name. Played that by that female wrestler. Um, because they obviously weren't there. It was just Bo-Katan, yeah. Fett, guess, Finnick. They probably had other things to do. I guess they had something else to do. Maybe, maybe they, in writing the episode, maybe they felt like there was not enough for them to 
individually. Yeah, there'd like, probably be too many, too many people. Yeah. To, too many people to follow on screen. Right, right. They didn't want to complicate it. So um I think but they did a great job and and the dark troopers just even that one on one fight with the uh, with Den, it yeah. was just like brutal when he's punching yeah. him in the face, like <laughs> into the into the uh, the bulkhead of right. the ship. And it was so Terminator. It was so yeah. Terminator. Yeah. It was like even even when the Dark Trooper is pulling apart the door, it was like <laughs> like is this the Terminator? What's going know, on yeah. here? And then you the should have done stop thrower. motion. <laughs> stop motion for that would have been creepy. Oh, no kidding. Um actually, yeah, that, that would be really awesome. Uh but that was a brutal fight, and then once we saw him sucked out the uh airlock, it was like, oh okay, I guess that's it. <laughs> and then nope, they all came back. Um, too easy. We all knew it was too easy. Yeah, I think. I mean, I was incredulous at first. I thought maybe that was it. And I was like, whoa, that was kind of lame. Like, yeah. <laughs> and then, but I was glad to be uh, proven wrong. And it, 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 they were a threat. You could, you could feel the tension when they were punching the, the main uh, door of the bridge. Mm -hmm. And it was like, oh crap, how are they going to get out of this? And of course, you got, um, Gideon just kind of like doing his little his little uh, Leonardo DiCaprio impression with the cup and the the pinky kind of yeah. like <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, and then the uh, the dark saber duel with uh, the the best car staff that was pretty cool that was brutal yeah. um I like how it glowed the best car glowed with like tension. Like it was going to actually possibly break from mm -hmm. the uh, dark saber, which didn't seem to be a, an an issue with lo a regular lightsaber. Like when Ahsoka uh, was fighting uh, um, that woman on um, that one planet on that one episode, <laughs> <laughs> you know, the thing with the guy <laughs> the in the other place. <laughs> Yeah, the thing with the guy and all yeah, I know is Michael Bean was in that episode. That's why I liked it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know anything else. Here it is. We've already forgotten all about the Jedi. Such an Gotta important rewatch. episode. Gotta rewatch. Um Yeah, and it, it's uh, it all set set up uh, you know, I, well did they confirm a season three with all the other yes. stuff? Yes, yeah, yeah, season so, three. Although I mean, it's obviously gonna, it's gonna come out slightly after or I think it's going to be 2022, but the yeah. Book of Boba Fett is going to be the focus of next December. And then, and, you know, you know, you know I'm, John, I'm fine. The, the older I get, you know, when, when the Return of the Jedi or the Revenge of the Sith came out, I was like, ah, it's, it's done. Like, <laughs> I can die and not worry about missing any, like, major Star right. Wars stuff. But right. now no, I can't. I can't. Nope. And, and all I am is older. And I'm just that much closer to death. Right. And all this stuff's coming out. I'm like, oh, crap. Am I going to make it? I know. Am I going to make it? Especially with all the stuff going on with, uh, you know. I know. I, I hate that feeling. That. I really hate that feeling because it's that. <laughs> there, there is that. What do they call that? There's a term for that. The, the fear of missing out or whatever. But FOMO. Um, yeah, FOMO. Um, no, I know. I was thinking the same thing just this last few months. Like. Like, dude, if they just keep cranking out these Disney Plus series and movies and, I mean, we got Rogue Squadron coming in three years, it's just like, oh, dude, am I going to be able to see all this? Am I going to be in a wheelchair or, or like, you know? <laughs> hope they got a good TV at the old <laughs> old folks' home. Yeah, seriously. Yeah, so, then, uh, yeah, anyway, season, season three should be exciting. And they didn't kill Gideon, which is nice, because he mm -hmm. can, you know, there could be some tension there and stuff, and with yeah. whatever whatever's going to happen with the um, the Darksaber and the Mandalorians. I think and, it's clear that they're setting up Mandalore as being a major focal point for future stories. Yeah. Probably even connected to well we all know that the book of boba fett is going to be happening concurrently with the mandalorian as well as ranges of the, of the new republic as well as ahsoka so yeah. that's going to be an interconnected plot thread 
and it probably will tie into Mandalore. It's probably going to tie into, obviously, Grogu. I'm absolutely sure we're going to see him down the line. They're yep. not going to. They're not going to just drop. We're going to see. Gro- we're going to see old old Ben Solo cut him down. <laughs> just uh, chop chop him in half. Yeah, that would that would really uh, get the sequel trilogy isn't happening people fired up um <laughs> but yeah well i'm sure we'll see all those down the line and i'm well, just you know excited. it is it is interesting you know they are interesting rumors the at least the rumors of how they would handle sort of erasing the sequel trilogy i don't i don't suspect that they would as a I, I know that I'm. I we don't see eye to eye on this. I yeah. Mm-hmm. I I do not like the sequel trilogy. I I like it well enough, but I would not shed a tear if they decided to decanonize it and yeah. kind of pull a mulligan. Mm-hmm. Um, it would suck for everyone involved to have put in all that time, effort, energy. And that's that's where all the legends people are like, ha ha, see how it feels. Well, see you don't have to gloat. Feels, guys? <laughs> you, you don't have to gloat. I mean, it's less so for, you know, it's less so for like JJ or Ryan or whatever. It's yeah. more so for like the actors that like, you know, were super excited. I, I'm saying yeah. it like it's going to happen, right? But yeah, like, yeah. E- even now, I mean, they they have to be saddled with. It, it's um, the actors that are close <laughs> to our age, like Oscar Isaac, who grew up as a fan, and well, it's get, they've yeah. gotten saddled. They've gotten like a raw deal, and it's not their fault, um, as far as like the fan reaction to these movies, and it's not all fans and stuff, and certainly. Yeah. But but just like having you know you got your shot and you're in a Star Wars movie and then it's like, eh, wasn't that yeah. great? I, I suppose that Ewan and and everybody uh, in the prequels kind of had the same thing, mm-hmm. maybe to a lesser extent because and time will tell with the sequels and all that stuff. But maybe to a lesser extent with the prequels, just because they've kind of come into their own over the last. Yeah two two decades yeah um and you know there's there's rough edges and there's faults to them but they're they're star wars sequels my main problem with them is that they just kind of they're they're missing the je ne sais quoi yeah i don't know what it is but it's it's just i think what it is is lucas i think that yeah kind of yeah and you know that's a whole rabbit hole we can go down and all that right but I, I anyway, I do feel it's it's interesting the rumors how they say they would address it is they would just kind of not address it. They would just kind of yeah. They're just gonna fill in all that that gap and like they just kind of don't acknowledge that they're going to happen in like the timeline or that they do happen or anything like they I just think kind of I, I think in a lot of ways it's kind of reliant on the actors if you're going to do stories around that time period that you would almost need the direct involvement of like say adam driver if you're going to do a pre force awakens story or at least if he has his mask off in live action or something yeah like it's that. just but it's, it's an interesting conundrum only so far in that now we have a we we do have a personal connection to or like an emotional connection to a character grogu who presumably yeah. goes off to live at the uh, jedi praxium mm-hmm. um nice call and, back. and it, exactly you got that um and then also you know we've seen luke and you know, it's like oh man this is what i wanted to see and it's like okay so now we're at the point where it's like well okay is that it? Is that all we're going to see of Luke and Grogu from here on out? Or are, are they going to flesh that out? If they do, are they going to, like, it, I mean, they can make Grogu escape or something, you know? Yeah. Like, he doesn't yeah. have to be cut down by Ben, but we all know that that's coming. So it's like, I don't know. It's a, it's an interesting, it's an interesting it's something to ponder, thought. and yeah, my yeah. my thought is that it might be like the Ezra and Thrawn situation, where we're going to put this on ice, we're going to get back to it at some point, obviously, because of the way it's left, 
but yeah. it's on ice for now. And yes, there's ideas of how to further it. I yeah, think and, that, and it's, that's what it is. Part part of it too is like it, it doesn't. It's not like they're running against the clock with like you know. Uh, it's not like Mark played the young Luke and then they're, they're like, Oh, we got to do this before Mark kicks the bucket or something. <laughs> right, right. Like, right. it's not like that. It's like, they could totally put it on ice and just address it all later in mm-hmm. some form, however they want to do it. You know, they could just be waiting to see how all this stuff, you know, the fan reaction, all this stuff and they're hedging their bets. And it's like, well, maybe, maybe, maybe it's just something on the table that they would decanonize yeah. the sequels. I don't know. And as far as Grogu goes, um, I'm sure that when they wrote the character before season one even started, when they when they were conceptualizing things, I'm sure John and Dave had an end game in plan for what the fate of Grogu was going to be. Because yeah, probably. Yeah. He's he's such an he's such a iconic and essential thread to the Mandalorian, and he I mean he's it's weird he's kind of the um, the MacGuffin, because the item that everyone is trying to get or save or whatever, mm-hmm. uh, just like the, the Death Star plans in A New Hope. Right, right. But he's also now become a character of his own. And it's funny that, yeah, I think just like with Ahsoka, you know, Dave and George Lucas, I think clearly they had an end game as far as Clone Wars post Revenge of the Sith. I think they had an idea of where Ahsoka was going to be during Anakin's downfall. And because Dave Filoni said that for even when the the Clone Wars originally ended in 2015 or whatever, he was like, I know where Ahsoka is during Revenge of the Sith. I know this and that, this and that. And so I just don't see something like that as being left to the wind. I, I think they have ideas and I think yeah. And that's great. I, I trust them. I definitely trust them. And also, at the same time, I don't need to know right now what the fate of Grogu is. And I think I think some fans, I think they clamor for stuff almost too fast. It's like, I need to know this now. Like Maybe it's people that binge stuff and they just want answers right away. It's like, guys, enjoy the mystery. You know, like he probably doesn't die at Luke's temple because that would be really, really morbid for Star Wars. And I, I just don't see that happening. But just enjoy the mystery and enjoy the speculation and, and enjoy the talking about it because we'll know. Eventually we'll know. And it's just like, don't worry yeah. about it. There's, there's other shit. There's other shit. Yeah. <laughs> and certainly, certainly this, uh, you know, with, uh, the Ahsoka series and the the logo of the Ahsoka series, eh, they they could do some world stuff with the, the world between worlds. And and I've seen people lay out timelines, you know, where they shuffle around the movies and the media of like, well, maybe the sequel. And and this is like, you know, uh, fans coming up with ways to like dismiss the sequels or to decanonize them or whatever. They they branch it off into like a another timeline. And they try to figure out where the branch was and stuff. And, you know, it's all an interesting, uh, like you said, it's an interesting thing to ponder like, yeah. what what's going to come. Maybe, and you know what it is? It gets, it gets us, it gets me excited about Star Wars again, which has not been a thing, not been that exciting since pre the, well, pre the, the Last Jedi, I'll say. Yeah. Yeah. Because that yeah. really... You know, I'm in that camp where I have problems. I'm not going to get sit there and like you know berate Ryan Johnson or berate you know actors, poor actors, poor you know people that just want to make a good movie. Ryan Johnson all he wants to do is make a good movie. Yeah, but you know it it fell short for me. So right you know. as as it did for a good portion of fans, and at the same time, I think what people need to realize is even if they feel that way that's okay and even if someone loves it that's okay too i don't think anyone should gatekeep how someone feels about something that's now now speaking of toxic fans and Mm -hmm. drama and twitter not that we're talking about twitter right but that goes along with it you wanted to talk about 
Yeah, Star I kinda, Wars theory. Kind of had a rant about the Star Wars theory situation. So going back almost a week ago now, I think, um, basically he posted a reaction video of him watching the finale of Mando and crying his eyes out. And that's fine. That's cool. I I I got barely a little misty eyed. I didn't really get that emotional. I mean, I felt a scene, a, a something, but it, I didn't. I didn't ball. My I eyes I out. got I got goose goosebumps, and I got I got a little misty eyed. Yeah, and that's that. There's nothing wrong with that. Even if whatever, however anyone wants to feel, that's it cool. was an emotional scene. For it was an reasons. emotional scene. It was. And especially if you have an emotional connection to Luke Skywalker, and I know you do, and there's a lot of fans that do. Um, but obviously, he posted that, and then some fans started making fun of him or teasing him about it, some aspect of it. And then Pablo Hidalgo of Lucasfilm commented, and I think it was a comment to another fan, he yes. was reacting to a reaction that was negative, but Pablo said, "What did he say again?" It was like, "Don't he show said, your emotions." Uh, he said, sh- uh, "Emotions aren't for sharing, or something aren't along for those sharing. lines." Right, right. Now, granted, the way that that was taken—I don't want to say out of context, but the context that that was cherry picked as and then focused on, aside from the other re- negative reaction. That obviously caused things, and the Twitterverse exploded again, as it tends to do. And then you you had mostly these swaths of support for Star Wars Theory, because then he made videos saying, Oh my god, how could someone say this? How could Lucasfilm do this to me? Who does Pablo Hidalgo think he is? This is so... This is bullying. And then I've... Since then, I've seen... I've not clicked on anything, but if you look at YouTube and see the um, the icons of the videos and how the, how mm-hmm. they make Pablo look all evil, and it's like he's bullying. Mm-hmm. This opens up so many negative things, and it's it's a little it's a little interconnected and it's a little nuanced. But I, th- in my opinion, I just feel like it's a manufactured reaction because this isn't the first time that star Wars theory has taken something that wasn't really directed at him in a certain way. And he's taken it personal and turned it into a big video thread that then gets tons of clicks. And I kind of feel like maybe (sighs) It's hard to say because you, YouTubers, if you if you have a popular channel and you're you're fishing for clicks as much as you can, you might unknowingly start manufacturing situations without even thinking about it. Mm-hmm. I I don't think Star Wars Theory inherently was manufacturing this out of any malice per se, but we know from from the past that he hated the Last Jedi. And he's had personal issues with Lucasfilm because they tried temporarily taking down his Darth Vader fan film, which w- I think was more of a automatic YouTube rejection. I don't, I don't think it was someone at Lucasfilm going, let's yank that. I think no. it was just an auto yank or whatever. And then they put it back up. But I, he, has, he has personal issues with them. And I, I just kind of feel like this is one of those things where it's like you're either with me or you're against me. <laughs> um, yeah. You know, that's, that's my take on it. I just well, kind of feel like, geez, really, really? I, I don't follow a lot of um, Star Wars YouTube channels and Star Wars social media stuff in general. Yeah. So I came across it. I don't even remember how I came across it, but when it hit my radar, I was, you know, I didn't know, I don't know who Star Wars Theory is and all that stuff. I just see a guy that, you know, kind of uh, put himself out there. I mean, so there's a lot of things going on. You got, if you're on YouTube and you're putting yourself out there personally, you, you know, you're going to get a lot of different, you're going to get a whole spectrum of reactions to what you're doing. So you got to have a thick skin. 
Yep. Which, you know, I don't know if he does or doesn't. It's fine. But I think I think really boils down to kind of a misunderstanding. Now, when I yeah. saw it, I saw his video and I saw I looked at Twitter and the Twitter feeds and stuff. And I know that Pablo has had um issues in the past um being sort of abrasive with certain segments of, of fans and stuff and, mm-hmm. and how he handles them. So so he hasn't he hasn't endeared himself um to everybody right how he how he reacts to people on twitter and uh and social media and and that is evident in the fact that his twitter account was protected so you yeah. couldn't see his tweets unless uh he followed you or something i'm not sure exactly right. how it works but yeah i don't so, know either but that's what so, i've heard so even his reply to the tweet that made fun of star wars theory was protected and i think he if i remember correctly he had to be sent that somebody had to screenshot it and send it to him to see what pablo said right so it wasn't even like necessarily that pablo was expecting anybody to see this other than the people in his circle or whatever right um and so but then it's weird because pablo took that screenshot or a screenshot of his tweet and then made it his like banner or something. Right. That's while. what I read. Yeah. Which is kind of um, strange. I don't so quite it's understand strange. That. So it's but, like, so, but at the end of the day, and, and I think my knee jerk reaction was like, Oh man, Pablo is a fucking asshole. <laughs> you know, right. That was my knee jerk reaction. Cause I was like, Oh, that's shitty. You know, this guy's like, you know, you're part of, you're part of this company making this thing that, you know, touches people emotionally and, and mm-hmm. people have a strong connection to and you all you want to do is is strengthen that and and widen it with as many people as possible to sell your product mm-hmm. and then you're shitting on somebody that that uh, uh you well know, you know is showing that this is an example of how that knee-jerk reaction now is is turned into a meme and other yes, yes. I- iconography and now it's it's made to sell itself and yeah. so it's so, all about selling that knee-jerk reaction. And that's why yeah. now other YouTubers are jumping on the story, furthering yeah. the knee-jerk response. And that's and, not good because then that gets away from objectively looking at it and analyzing and understanding the situation. Yeah, and having a conversation because my knee-jerk was Pablo's an asshole and stuff. And, mm-hmm. and even reading his... Pablo's follow-up tweet that he put out there unprotected as two tweets talking about talking about the tweet and saying that it was a misunderstanding and it was more poke, you know, like kind of uh, what was it, poking fun of him, not himself, but like that section of fandom maybe or something. I don't know. Yeah. But anyway, yeah. it didn't it didn't come off as very genuine and to me, but it's also on Twitter, so you can't there's not a lot of context, and I think that's yeah partially the root of the whole problem. Yes, um, that is that is the key. And so you, myself, and and Billy had a short conversation on uh, in Facebook comments about yeah. it, and you know, uh, reading um, yours and Billy's comments on it, sort of it made me reevaluate what he, what Pablo had said, what he said uh, following up to that his explanation yeah and i took a uh, basically just took a step back thought about it and was like you know what i could see how it's a big misunderstanding and certainly my point one of my major points was besides like pablo's an asshole which i retracted is that there are people that should not be on twitter or should not communicate in those ways pablo is probably one of those people yeah you you really have to be careful with the nuances of of communicating online. If you're mm-hmm. going to be sarcastic, you need to make it clear, possibly need to make it clear. And a simple like forward slash S just to denote that you were being sarcastic yeah. probably would have been all he needed. Not everybody probably, knows that. But probably so. I, I think it's a case in point of everyone needs to take a step back and understand these situations and how they can be misread because we've all done it in text messages with significant others or friends or whatever where 
you text something a certain way and if you don't put a little emoji it comes off in a whole you can misinterpret things especially if someone is not good with nuance or grammar in I texting think, you know so, uh, it you, you mentioned the chuck wendig uh issue before mm-hmm. and um i think you know that's that's fine if if uh, you know you're being hostile towards people and the company doesn't like that you're you're going to get fired and stuff. So yeah, yeah. Now in Pablo's case, in this particular case, probably all that really needs to happen is, and Pablo did it at least publicly so far is just apologize. And, uh, you know, it'd be cool if he like contacted, uh, whatever his real name is, Star Wars yeah. theory guy. Yeah. And just apologize, or, you know, talk about it or whatever, which would be cool. Also though, if you're going to, I don't know. People in general, they just need to be careful. Um, if you're even a Z-list famous person like Pablo, you know, he's not the face of Lucasfilm, but he is a face of Lucasfilm. Yeah, yeah. He is a name that people know. He's yep. been with the company a long time. You just have you have to be careful when you're dealing with the fan base in a public forum. Now, right. his tweets were public or weren't public, they were protected, that doesn't mean anything. If it's online, you have to assume that it can get out there and stuff and be misinterpreted. Yes. You know, yes. you just have to be careful. Um, yeah, and at the same time, I think everything you said is spot on. And at the same time, on the other side of it, I think everyone needs to be genuine in how they react to things and not um, manufacturing things that aren't necessarily false but trumping them up and making yeah. them appear way knowingly and that's, i'm not saying that's the case here but there is people all over youtube that knowingly do this with with things and they turn it into a manufactured trigger yeah. response and then yeah because drama that, uh, drama sells clicks and yep. uh social media is a cancer especially Twitter. It sure is. Because people use it for way more than it should be used for. And there's, uh, yeah, it just, um, yeah. I mean, yeah, I shouldn't say it's cancer, but it's, um, there are a lot of problems with social media and that is one symptom of them, of it, of the yeah. problems. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. Um, Everybody just, like uh, we were saying before the show, we were talking about it. Everybody just needs to, on Twitter especially, just chill and be cool like right be cool let's all be cool we're all different just, star wars fans just be excellent to each other <laughs> be excellent yeah the great bill and ted yeah um yeah i couldn't agree more and we have to understand now also that star wars has gone on for 44 years now uh just about yeah 44 now and you have to understand there's different generations of star wars fans and what a teenager thinks of the sequels is not going to be how you and I see the sequels. And that's not going to be how older fans than us see the sequels. And likewise for the prequels, because we were there for the prequels in our early twenties to mid twenties. And we saw all the negative reaction they got. Mm -hmm. We were, we lived through the special edition hatred that went on with the Mm -hmm. changes to that. We even saw before the special editions, there was still lasting effects from the 80s of anti-ewok bias and yeah yeah. um things of that sort i think really i mean i know there was a super small minority of people that had issues with empire compared to a new hope saying it was too dark and, and it took away the cheerfulness of a new hope so we just have to understand that my star wars might be different from your star wars and other person's star wars but at the end of the day we're all fans and in some cases with a lot of kids what what you may not like that's their first star wars and if they love it and that's that's what hooked them then that's cool man that's really awesome because that might hit them in a way that we got hit when we played tie fighter or like read the Thrawn trilogy you know and people forget that they just think me 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 you know, it's all about me and my feelings and George Lucas raped my childhood and this and that. And you got to look at it from other points of view. It's all it's all right there with Obi-Wan. 
you know, certain point of view. And it's about what Qui-Gon says. Your focus determines your reality. If yeah. you focus on certain things, that's all you're going to see. So I'm focused on The Last Jedi being shit. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Stupid Not really, Ryan but... Johnson. Yeah, Ryan Johnson. Ryan Johnson raped my <laughs> adulthood. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm in yeah. my mid thirties, but he raped my childhood. That's right. right. Yeah. So I think on that note, uh, I think we covered it pretty good. And uh, these are other little tangents and topics that I'm sure we're going to talk about in future episodes, as far as fan culture and fan interactions online. And from a generational point of view, it's, a, it's an interesting topic that I like talking about. Yeah. Uh, so, was there anything else you wanted to cover in regards to the Star Wars theory situation, or, or are we are we? No, good? everybody just needs to be cool. You know, it's 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 cool if you don't like something, and it's cool if you like something, and you just have to you just have to accept it. That's right. Uh, on that note, uh, everyone, I hope you enjoyed this episode, and uh, if you want to reach us through email we are at star wars unfiltered at yahoo.com you can check us out on the facebook page just look up star wars unfiltered we are on instagram at star wars unfiltered and of course as always we have the youtube channel just look it up you should find it it's the one with like two views per video so you'll have no trouble seeing the uh all all the plethora of content that we have that gets no clicks at all so Maybe we need to manufacture some um, some uh, negativity. Well, which one of us is going to cry on camera? Oh, I can't anymore. I can't cry at movies. If you if you want controversy, think about this. Why did they make handcuffs that small for Grogu? <laughs> and See, there's... I, I asked myself the question in my head just a minute ago. Yeah. And I figured it out. It's for Kowaki and monkey lizards. It was for a salacious <laughs> crumb. It's so you could put them on a spit and then roast them over a fire. <laughs> oh, on come on. Navarro. I love salacious. I got a little salacious I, crumb on my... On I do my, too. And actually, uh, let me just mention that I've been browsing for Star Wars hoodies and shirts on Amazon. I took a good serious look in, at some salacious crumb t-shirts. So. Ah, I seem... That could be a whole episode in itself, but I, I seem to recall there being a salacious crumb shirt, like... 15 or 20 years ago that I really kind of <laughs> almost got, but yeah, I'm not we'll, sure. We'll, we'll cover that on a collecting oriented episode sometime. <laughs> right. Yeah. The QVC we'll, episode. Oh, just wait. Just wait. <laughs> so, anyway, I uh, hope everyone enjoyed the episode and uh, we'll catch you next time. Good night. Good night. <laughs>